St. Petersburg is the city of St. Peter Christ Companion. At its initial section, the source of the Moika River is situated in the area of the first engineering bridge, the continuation of which is the old site of the Fontanka River embankment. It is from the Fontanka that the Moika River originates. Somewhere under the bridge there is a hidden, tiny sculpture Chizik Pizik. Until now, we do not reliably know the origin of this name and the popular Russian comic song from which it was taken. The first object that we meet on the way is the Mikhailovsky castle. It was built by order of Emperor Paul I in the shortest possible time in the last years of the 18th century. At that time, many construction sites in St. Petersburg were stopped in order to redistribute building materials and workers from them to the castle site. This is the only so-called castle on the water in Russia, with the exception of the much older Vyborgsky one that was erected in the style of Romantic classicism of knightly Europe. It stands out noticeably among other buildings of the historical center of the city. The color of the castle in definite pink, orange, yellow, peach apricot and its name in honor of the Archangel Michael is the only example of architecture in Russia when a secular building carries the name of a religious character. In the chambers of this castle in 1801, shortly after the relocation, Paul I was killed, ingloriously ending his strange and inconsistent administration of Russia. By the way, the country receives the news of the death of the emperor with ill-concealed enthusiasm. Before and after the revolution of 1917, for almost 150 years, this former royal residence housed the engineering school, in different years called the main school Nikolaevsky and Leningradsky. That is why the palace has a second official name, engineering. Then, until modern times, various institutes and centers were also located here, and now the palace is a branch of the Russian Museum. The stay of heterogeneous institutions and departments for 200 years had a strong impact on the interior of the castle. Even though the main interior changes took place immediately after the regicide of, and the flight of Romanov family from the residence, we will never see the palace in the form in which it was conceived and created by the martyr emperor. On both sides of the initial section of Moika River, there are extensive garden and park zones. On the right side you can see the summer garden and after the Lebyazhnika Navki swan groves, the field of Mars. On the left side is the Mikhailovsky garden. The summer garden, now owned by the Russian Museum, was founded by order of Peter the Great at the beginning of the 18th century. Now it is famous for an abundance of greenery, marble sculptures in antique style, and fountains. The field of Mars, named after the god of war Mars, by analogy with the square in Rome and Paris, originally served as a military parade ground and a place for military parades. In contrast to the summer garden, there is very little vegetation here. In Soviet times, the field became the place of the fraternal burial of those who died in the events of 1917, as well as a number of Soviet party workers and Bolshevik revolutionaries. The eternal flame at the tomb of the unknown soldier in Moscow was lit from the eternal flame of the field of Mars. The Mikhailovsky Garden of the Russian Museum is one of the well-maintained parks in the city. In the back of it is the building of the Mikhailovsky Palace, now the main building of the Russian Museum. It once belonged to and was named in honor of the Grand Duke Mikhail Pavlovich, the son of the Emperor Paul I and accordingly the younger brother of Emperors Alexander I and Nicholas I. Near the Moika River in this garden there is a pavilion and a granite pier designed by Carlo Rossi in the Empire style. The pavilion, a small light building normally placed in gardens or parks, a gazebo, is installed in the eastern corner on the continuation of the longitudinal axis of the field of Mars. The pavilion compositionally connects the two ensembles. We are now approaching the Triple Bridge. This area is the source of the Gribayedov Canal. Nowadays it is named in honor of the famous Russian writer and diplomat, but until 1923 the canal was called Hikaterininsky. On the initial section of the canal to our left, at the northwestern edge of the Mikhailovsky Garden, is the Church of Christ's Resurrection on the blood of Emperor Alexander II.
On the left you can see the main imperial stables. The architectural monument that follows the shape of the smooth bend of the Moika River was built by order of Peter the Great at the beginning of the 18th century. In those times, the main facade of the building was facing the Moika. However, 100 years later, the stables were rebuilt and reconstructed so that now the main facade is facing Canusian Square and the Church of the Savior of the Holy Face. The latter is inbuilt into the ensemble of the stables. It was in this church that the funeral service of the great Russian writer Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin took place in 1837. The second section of the river until the Pevchisky Bridge near Palace Square. On both sides, there are three, four, and five story buildings, each one having its own rich history. The ensemble of these buildings creates a unique charm and flavor of the city, which is so much loved by Russians and guests from other countries. On the right, you can see the Round Market, one of the oldest in the city. The Reserve Palace served as a service building and a stable yard at Novomikhailovsky Palace, which stands next to the palace embankment. Next is the house of the Lamp Master Kittner, who amassed capital on orders throughout Petersburg, which at that time was switching from candlelight to oil lamp lighting. Two houses of Abamelech Lazarev, the richest landowner and prince at the turn of the 19th and 20th century. Earlier, these houses were owned by the most influential counts and princes of Russia. The Labanov Rostovsky house, where Karl Mannheim, the famous military leader and president of Finland, lived for several years. A very contradicting figure from Russian point of view. Next is Fersen Tenement House, where a wonderful Russian artist, Mikhail Bayarsky, lives. He starred in the famous Soviet film about D'Artagnan and Three Musketeers, based on the novel of Alexander Dumas. Earlier here lived the first mayor of the city, Anatoly Sapchak, an iconic figure for Russia. At one time he was the head of Vladimir Putin. And next is the mansion of the Count Arakcheyev. On the left is the key building of this section, the house number 12 of Princess Volkonskaya, where from 1836 until his death, Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin and his family rented an apartment. After the poet's death, his apartment, like the building itself, was repeatedly rebuilt and changed owners. And only a century later it became a museum, where by now the previous interiors have been more or less recreated. Nowadays the writer's museum apartment, which is very popular with guests of the city, is a part of the Russian museums of Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin. We also strongly recommend you not to forget to visit the literary exposition Pushkin Life and Creativity in another wing of the house number 12. Excursions here are much less popular, however, just looking at the poet's drafts, scribbled and crossed out alone in the cross, you clearly realize that in addition to physical giftedness, which is the basis of any person's talent, it is titanic work that underlies the phenomenon of a genius. Just as a jewelry cut a diamond and the miner extracts ore, so the great poet worked hard on the birth and brilliance of every work, contrary to the ordinary ideas about the ease of such labor, some kind of luck and creativity at the whim. Pevchisky Bridge is one of the widest bridges in the historical center of St. Petersburg. It leads to the most recognizable and world-famous landmark of the city, Palace Square with the Alexander Column in the center. 
and the building of the Winter Palace with the Hermitage and the General Staff Building with the Triumphal Arch in honor of the victory of Russian arms in the War of 1812. These two are standing opposite to each other. However, it would be more correct to say that the bridge and the approach to it is a continuation of the Palace Square in northeastern direction. It is named Pivchesky because it rests against the gates of the State Academic Capella of St. Petersburg, which is located on the left side of the Moika River. The history of this bridge goes back to 1834, when according to the project of the famous architect August von Ferran, a wooden bridge was built to facilitate the passage of troops to the Palace Square to participate in the parade on the occasion of the opening of the Alexander Column. On the third section of the river up to Nevsky Prospect, on our left, we note a nondescript residential building where employers of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs lived before the revolution. It is followed by the apartment house of the 19th century writer and publisher Alexei Suvorin. Here, during the revolution, the editorial office of the newspaper Pravda was located. It was visited by Lenin. And nowadays, here it is located the St. Petersburg Press Museum. Finally, at the end of the section, there is a building of the best and very famous hotel of the late 18th and early 19th centuries, Demut, where lived many Russian writers and the lives of a number of literary heroes are connected with. On the right, practically along the entire length, is the eastern facade of the General Staff Building. The General Staff Building is one of the highest governing bodies of the armed forces of the Russian Empire. Over the years, the building also housed various ministries, not only the military. But now a part of the building is occupied by the command of the Western Military District, and another part belongs to the Hermitage Museum. The outstanding architect Carlo Rossi, during the construction of this object in 1819-1829, managed to combine the complex of buildings of Palace Square into a single ensemble, thanks to his unusually bold special thinking and artistic scope. Even though the Winter Palace was erected by Rastrelli almost 100 years earlier and was made in completely different architectural style. We are now crossing the Nevsky Prospect, rightfully called the main street of the city. The fourth section of the river, which stretches to Garohova Street, opens the Stroganov Palace. It is on our left. Built in the mid-18th century in the Russian Baroque style, this building is the oldest of the Francesca Rastrelli's masterpieces. Its beauty and the interiors invariably amaze visitors. Previously, palace belonged to the barons and counts of the Stroganov family. In our times, it is a branch of the Russian Museum. On the right side of the Moika River, opposite the Stroganov Palace, there is also the house of the 18th century chief of police, Chicherin. This house is remarkable for its beauty and interiors. Later, it was the house of Yeliseev merchants. Being one of the first examples of early classicism, the facades of the building have something in common with the facades of the Winter Palace. The house has a rich cultural history. At one time, here lived the architect Yakoma Kvarengi, writers Gribayedov and Kuchelberger. Pushkin and Dostoevsky often visited the house, and later, in Soviet times, many famous cultural figures worked and performed here. Since the building was turned into a house of arts, which set the task of organizing creative evenings, concerts, exhibitions, book publishing. It was here that Alexander Green's Scarlet Sales was written, and the remarkable Russian poet Nikolai Gumilov was arrested in 1921. Later, a cinema barricades operated in the building. Behind Chicherin's house are the tenement houses of the cashier of the Imperial Theatre's Grigory Ruadze and the building of the Russian Foreign Trade Bank. In these buildings, the history of which requires separate consideration, nowadays two universities are located. First, the Bonbrievich State University of Telecommunications. No, not a revolutionary Bolshevik, Lenin's comrade in arms, but a professor of radio engineering, the founder of the Russian radio tube industry. Today, it is the country's leading university in the telecommunications. Further, in the building of the Set Bank of the late 19th century, there is a University of Industrial Technologies and Design, formed from the Leningrad Textile Institute. 
both universities recently celebrated their 19th jubilee. Behind Stroganov Palace, to the left of the river, most of the block within the boundaries of Gorokhovaya, now it is in front of us, Kazanskaya in the back, and Nevsky Prospect behind us, is occupied by the buildings of Russian State Pedagogical University, named after Herzen, one of the leading pedagogical universities in Russia. The university traces its history back to 1797. Note that this territory contains buildings of various architectural eras, Baroque, Early Classicism, Empire, and Late Classicism at their most mature stages. Thanks to this fact, the whole complex was included in the UNESCO list of all cultural heritage sites. The main building of the university is located in the palace of Count Kirill Razumovsky, who was a field marshal, hetman of the Parushsky army in the middle of the 18th century. He ruled Little Russia under Empress Elizaveta Petrovna. He was the president of the Russian Academy of Sciences throughout the second half of the 18th century and the founder of the famous county and princely family of Razumovskys. From the Moika side, in front of the palace, Students are successively greeted by the front gate and the monument to Konstantin Ushinsky, an outstanding Russian teacher and writer, the founder of scientific pedagogy in Russia. We are approaching the famous Gorokhovaya Street. After the most severe fires of 1736-37, which destroyed a significant part of the original often wooden buildings in St. Petersburg, the concept of the Admiralty Trident was approved as a new plan. Three central streets of St. Petersburg are split off from the Admiralty Tower at three rays. The Bolshaya Promising Street, the Riznevsky Prospect which remained behind us, Srednia or Admiraltyska Perspective, now Gorokhova Street, and Vaznesenska Prospectna Street, now Vaznesenski Prospect, which we will come across in front of us. Further, we know that somewhere in the blocks on the right, in the middle of the 18th century, a merchant by the name of Harach, which German Rus, popularly nicknamed Goroch or Gorokhov, lived or ran his shop. Hence, the name of the street came over time. Gorokhova Street is undoubtedly the most literary street in Russia. In addition to the outstanding character of Russian literature Ilya Oblomov, the understanding of the primitive interpretation of which comes to us only in adulthood, the heroes of Dostoevsky, Gogol, Kuprin, and Chernyshevsky also lived here. There are numerous references to the street in the works of poets of the 20th century. The fifth section of the river, from the red to the blue bridge, opens on the right the trading house of European partners' relatives Stefan Esdras and Karl Schäfels. Built at the beginning of the 20th century in the Art Nouveau style, based on the Zinger House on Nevsky Prospect. It was the first multi-story store in Russia, or in modern terms, the largest shopping center, mainly focused on wealthy clients. Members of the imperial family of Nicholas II more than once were among the clients of Grand Magasin of Mont Rouge. By the way, this is one of the few survived buildings of the Esdes and Schäfels trading house network in many European capitals. Throughout the Soviet times, a garment factory was located here. Relatively recent, it shifted outside the city. By the way, it was from this factory that the latest clothing workshop emerged in 1928, which later became one of the most famous Soviet enterprises of light industry, the Bolshevichka factory. Since 2015, the renovated building has once again hosted bright and expensive shops and beauty palaces like 100 years ago. Note that the memorable dome with a spire crowning the building was also recreated from photographs only in our times. The spire is a caduceus that is a road entwined with two snakes facing each other, with wings on the top of the road. This symbol came to us from ancient Greek mythology from the legends of Apollo and Hermes and means reconciliation agreement. It is both an attribute of the ancient Roman ambassadors and a symbol of international trade, along with the staff of Asclepius and the Gigai cup, a symbol of medicine. It was even offered as a coat of arms of the young Soviet Republic. Today you can see it on the emblems of the Federal Customs Service, the Chamber of Trade and Commerce, the Mandatory Health Insurance Fund and on the coats of arms of a number of Russian cities. In Soviet times, the house lost this superstructure. 
According to a number of experts, it is deservedly so, since the installation of such a tower is nothing more than architectural vandalism of the early 20th century. It distorted the ensemble of Garohova Street, with the Admiralty Spire at its end, if you follow from the Fantanka on the left of us in the southeast to the Neva on the right. On the left side of the Moika embankment in this quarter, there are interesting houses, each one with its own rich history. For example, in the house of the Merchantile, which is at the corner of Garohova Street, there was once the most aristocratic institution of the city, the English Assembly, and then the third department of His Imperial Majesty's own Chancellery. The house of the restaurator Juan resides the German cultural center Goethe, whose ultimate goal is to maintain a positive image of Germany in the world through educational and cultural programs. In the next building on Moika Embankment 60, in the 19th century there was a Hotel Russia and the fashionable Televsky Bathhouse Banya, and now here is the Jewish center. At the end of the block on the left is the house of the merchant Yakunchikova. This is the first address of the great Russian writer Nikolai Vasilievich Gogol in St. Petersburg, as well as the former residence of the ambassador and then the sixth president of the United States, Quincy Adams. We are returning to the old right-hand side of the Moika embankment. In this block, after the Esther's and Schaefer's trading houses, we note the following elegant buildings with beautiful facades of various colors. These are the mansions of Veltsin, Tura, Pongelis, Ritzaport, respectively green, red, orange, and pale brown colors. At the end of the block, in the last building, in front of the Blue Bridge, there is the Institute of Plant Genetic Resources, named after the outstanding scientist Nikolai Vavilov. The institute dates back to the end of the 19th century. The Moika River is a small river less than 5 km long, flowing from the northeast to the southwest. The width of the river doesn't exceed 40 meters, and the depth is 3. The Moika is not an artificial canal. As a branch of the present-day Fantanka, it is still visible on the very old maps, both before and in the first years of the founding of St. Petersburg. Initially, the river was called Mia, from the Izora Muya, that is mud, slush, apparently because of its turbidity and swampiness. But then the name was adopted for the Russian ear and associated with the natural for the river verb to wash. Izoras is indigenous small people of the nowadays Leningrad region. It belongs to the Finno Ugric language group. At present, it is practically an extinct and assimilated people. According to data for 2010, no more than 300 people remained of the indigenous Izoras. The Moika River is suitable for small shipping. It was dressed in granite embankments at the beginning of the 19th century. In total, 15 bridges have crossed the Moika, including the colored ones mentioned by us, painted at one time in order to avoid regular confusion between them. Many houses on the central section of the Moika embankment have double numeration with the Bolshaya Marskaya Street, which runs parallel in the depths of the blocks on the right. The Blue Bridge, being in fact a continuation of St. Isaac's Square, makes up a single ensemble with it. On the left is the majestic Mariinsky Palace, named after Princess Maria Nikolaevna, daughter of Emperor Nicholas I and accordingly sister of Alexander II. By the way, we note that the famous Mariinsky Theatre, despite the consonants, was named after the wife of Alexander II, Empress Maria Alexandrovna. The palace, on the other hand, was a wedding present on the occasion of the marriage of Princess Maria to the Duke of Lochtenberg. By the way, evaluate the scale of the imperial gifts from the perspective of present times. The Grand Duchess was an outstanding personality. For a long time, she headed the Imperial Academy of Arts. As for the palace, from the end of the 19th century to the present day, it, along with the Winter and Tauride palaces, became one of the so-called political palaces of St. Petersburg. At one time, there was a state council, the Supreme Council of the National Economy, Lensavet, and now the Legislative Assembly of the city. The building was actively involved in the difficult political events of 1917 and 1991. In the center of the ensemble is the equestrian statue of Emperor Nicholas I, made by the sculptor Peter Claude and designed by the architect Auguste Montferrand. 
Let us note two interesting facts. On the same axis but in front of the St. Isaac's Cathedral, almost at the same distance, facing the Bolshaya Niva, there is a monument to Peter the Great, the bronze horseman. The fact that the equestrian sculpture of Emperor Nicholas was the first in Russia and one of the first in the world to be installed on only two points of support, the hind legs of a horse. It is a truly technical miracle for its time. This is what saved the statue from demolition in Soviet times. The monument was opened in the middle of the 19th century after the death of the emperor. Its pedestal is decorated with symbolic figures. Finally, the central building of the ensemble in front of St. Isaac's Square is the Cathedral of St. Isaac's of Dalmatia. It may seem ridiculous to someone, but we know for sure many guests of the city confuse it with the Kazansky Cathedral on Nevsky Prospect. In Christianity, a reverend is a saint among the monks, that is a person who has pleased God with his monastic deed. Saint Isaac was an early Christian hermit monk, the first leader of the Dalmatian monastery near Constantinople, now Istanbul in Turkey. His feat consisted in the selfless defense of Christianity against the Aryan heresy, as well as before the Roman Emperor. Isaac's Memorial Day is May the 30th, according to the old style. It is also the birthday of Emperor Peter the Great. Thanks to this, St. Isaac's Cathedral was founded in the new capital of Russia, the fourth of the versions of which, as you see now, was solemnly consecrated in 1858, also on May 30th. It all began at the beginning of the 18th century with a wooden and simple one-story barn for drawings of the Admiralty Medal, on the roof of which a church spire was installed. It was in this first small church for workers of the Admiralty shipyard that Peter the Great married with his second wife. The second Isaac's church stood near the Neva for about 50 years. Made in stone, very similar to the Peter and Paul Cathedral, the church was regularly damaged during floods of the river. The third cathedral, which took 35 years to be built, was consecrated at the very beginning of the 19th century. It induced only ridicule and bitter irony among the people, since for a number of reasons it received distorted proportions and a strange combination of a luxurious marble base and brick walls. Almost immediately it was decided to rebuild it. The architect Auguste Montferrand built the modern cathedral. The history of its construction and painting of interior decoration stretching for almost 100 years is a separate big topic. During the Soviet era, the cathedral was damaged in both the revolutionary and the war years, but restored during the restoration works of the 50s and 60s. In our times, disputes about the status of the cathedral periodically revive whether it should be a temple in a museum, as it is now, or a museum in a temple. There are many underlying reasons for this. Let us know just a few of the arguments on both sides. Of course, an institution that is religious in spirit must belong to the church. However, from the moment of construction, it almost never belonged to it, since at all times it required very large costs for maintenance. Moreover, this cost could only be covered by the state treasury, and at the same time, during the time of the empire, the cathedral was under double subordination, the Ministry of Internal Affairs and the Spiritual Departments, although the latter was also a part of the state apparatus. Today the museum functions successfully, fully pays for itself, since several million people are visiting the cathedral annually. The museum gives significant deductions to the city treasury, despite the fact that there is enough money for very expensive systems and work to maintain the building and its territory in good condition. Church services are regularly held in the cathedral. However, there are a number of restrictions that cause discomfort for priests and parishioners. Out of millions of visitors per year, only a few tens of thousands of people come to these services. The transfer of the cathedral to the bosom of the church will involve the abolition of admission fees, the closure of the altar part, the decision of the fate of some museum exhibits, the dismissal of a number of museum employers, the organization of excursions. Also, the money for the maintenance and continuous restoration of the cathedral will again to be taken from the state treasury, since the church is unlikely to find such funds. All this causes serious concern in an educated society. Perhaps realizing all this after active discussions in 2015-2018 on this topic, the Russian Orthodox Church didn't send an official request for the transfer of the cathedral.
It seems to us that St. Isaac's Cathedral is undoubtedly a unique structure. It is both a cultural monument, an example of late classicism in architecture, and the city's cathedral church that is a bishop's place of service. Initially symbolizing the unity of the secular and the spiritual authorities, even today by its very existence, it raises the fundamental questions of the existence of humanity and has a sacred meaning for the city. As for the spiritual side of the issue, please note that the cathedral is not made in Orthodox traditions, but rather in the Western European Catholic style. Let each of you, after having visited it, answer the questions. Do you feel the presence of God in it? Or are you closer to the solitude and silence of small churches of Russia? What is more in this temple? A direct spiritual purpose or a cultural delight from the performing technique of a masterpiece? like the paintings of Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci on religious topics, which are not icons and near which you do not have a desire to pray. We continue our IOR excursion. On the sixth section of the river up to the Krukov Canal, immediately after the Blue Bridge, on the right bank there is a stone pillar with marks of water levels during floods in St. Petersburg. At present, it seems to be only a historical attraction, since the northern capital can forget about floods after the completion of more than 30 years' construction of the dam. It stretches on the Neva Bay of the Gulf of Finland, across the island of Kotlin with the city of Kronstadt. Also, on the right side of the river, in a series of impressive big houses with various decor, we bring your attention to a small two-story mansion of Gagarin Polovtsev, which is not far from the Lamp Bridge. Its exteriors, facing the Moika embankment, is made with elegant simplicity and classical proportions, but the interiors strike with amazing beauty, a rare combination of luxury and comfort. The interiors does not concede to any other palace's decorations. We definitely recommend this house for a visit to anyone who would like to deviate from the usual excursion routes. On the left bank we will mark the house of the Russian-American company. It was a powerful semi-state joint stock company. In the 19th century it carried out commercial and administrative activities in the American Northwest, Alaska and the Kuril Islands for more than 70 years. Here is the list of the achievements of this organization, the monopoly of fishery, trade, mineral exploitation, discovery and annexation of new territories to Russia in the North Pacific Ocean, as well as the establishment of Russian-American and Russian-Japanese diplomatic relations. It is necessary to especially mention the first manager of Russian-American company, the first main ruler of Russian America, famous Alexander Baranov, whose energetic and bold activity made it possible to bring to life many Russian projects in North America, thanks to which the memory of him is alive in the United States and in Russia. We also know that Decembrist, Relief, Bistuzhev, Marlinsky and Stengel once lived in this house. Kolshaya Marskaya Street accompanied the Moika River on the right in the back of the houses for a considerable length, starting from Nevsky Prospect. Now in the area of the pedestrian Pachtamsky Bridge, it merges with the right side of the Moika embankment, continuing for a short time until the Krukov Canal and actually replacing this embankment. The actual Moika embankment starts from this place and goes until the end of the river, remaining only on the left side. In the triangle formed by the Moika embankment Bolshaya Morskaya Street and Pachtansky Lane, there is a strange, standing out from the others in the block, building of the Palace of Culture of Communication Workers, nowadays with facades in poor condition, owned by the Russian Post. Its history is connected, among other things, with the formation of the Leningrad School of Russian Rock. Aquarium, Kino and other groups performed and recorded their first songs here. However, few people will guess in this building the beheaded and completely rebuilt in the style of constructivism, the German Protestant Church of the middle of the 19th century, which preached the reformed orientation of the teachings of John Calvin.
Note that in this block many houses of the right side belonged earlier and still belong to the telegraph and telephone departments and the Russian Post. On the left side there are notable buildings. In the courtyard of a beautiful corner house at Moika Embankment 8082 there are famous and now restored and operating so-called Voronin or lamp bath houses. At one time these were the folk baths of a merchant and at the same time an outstanding botanist, founder of Russian mycology and phytopathology, doctor of sciences and academician of the Imperial Academy of Sciences, Michael Voronin. The architect of these extremely progressive for their century bathhouses, Pavel Suzer, received a gold medal for his project at the Polytechnic Exhibition in Vienna. From the magazine World Illustration for 1871, last May, Petersburg was pleased and amazed by the unexpected news that there were new baths on the corner of the Lamp Plain and the Moika. People had flooded in Tavaroninsky and were amazed, and there was a reason to be amazed. By the way, we should note that the baths were made for visitors of different wealth. Next is the house of Michael Galitsyn, a diplomat and famous bibliophile of the first half of the 19th century. The richest collection of books, paintings and arts and crafts collected by him and several generations of his family was one of the finest European collections of the 19th century. It then formed the basis of the Galitsyn Museum on Valhonka in Moscow and then was transferred or sold to the Pushkin State Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow the Hermitage and Public, now Russian National Library in St. Petersburg. By the way, Galitsyn himself didn't live in the house on the Moika, but rented it to Shuvalovs, the count couple, who then bought the house and turned it into one of the most fashionable salons for the high society of St. Petersburg. Perhaps the key building in this section is the Yusupov Palace. It was one of the many palaces of the richest princes, nobles and landowners Yusupovs in Russia. It belonged to several generations of them from 1830 to the October Revolution. In Soviet times, the palace was taken under state protection early enough, thanks to which, despite some plundering in the post-revolutionary years and serious damage during the war, its amazingly beautiful interiors have survived to this day and have been restored more than once. Currently, the elegant building is an independent museum open to the public. Concerts, performances, various cultural events are also regularly held here. And in the basement of the palace is organized an exhibition dedicated to Grigory Rasputin, a dark figure at the turn of the 19th and 20th centuries whose murder took place in these walls. I love you, place of Peter's making. I love your stone and stylish face, the Neva's mighty curtain breaking on her embankment's granite grace, the patterns on your wrought iron fences, your twilight's clear and thoughtful gloom, on summer evenings shining moonless, when I sit sleepless in my room and write and read and need no lanterns, how gleams the building sleeping monsters on streets deserted, and I see the needle of the Admiralty. This section of the Moika is completed on both sides by the complex of buildings of the former military departments. On the left, the military collegium and the quartermaster office, and on the right, the barracks of the lifeguard cavalry regiment, that is, selected military units to protect the royal person. At the same time, one of the buildings of the rimsky korsakov State Conservatory, the first conservatory in Russia, which has been leading its history since 1862, is now located in the first complex, on the left in the corner house, in front of the Patsiluev Bridge. In the officers' barracks of the lifeguards on the right bank of the Moiker, the State University of Aerospace Instrumentation is currently located. Counting its history from the difficult 1941, now the university is invariably included in the ratings of the best universities of the country. The Patsiluev Bridge, which is in front of the Krukov Canal, due to its name, 
it can be translated in English as Kissbridge, has accreted with many legends and folk traditions, but it is named so by the name of the 18th century merchant Nikifor Patsiluyev, who kept a drinking house nearby. After the Patsiluyev Bridge, but before the Krukov Canal, on the right there are so-called Krukovsky or Morskie or Naval Barracks, triangular in their plan with the inner courtyard. They were rebuilt in an eclectic style in the middle of the 18th century by order of Emperor Nicholas I for the Baltic fleet cruise. In Soviet times there was a sailors' club, and now there is an extremely fascinating Central Naval Museum named after Emperor Peter the Great, that belongs to the Ministry of Defense. On the left, in the apartment building of Baron Fittingov, there is a museum and exhibition center Petersburg Artist, which contains a unique collection of paintings by artists of the Leningrad Petersburg School of Realism of the second half of the 20th century and the present times. This school is characterized by a strong individuality, adherence to the academic traditions of realism, restraint and depth of feelings, clarity of expression of thought, a life-affirming approach to reflecting upon the world, and a special attitude to the landscape. On the seventh section of the river up to the Hrapovitsky Bridge on the right is New Holland. This is a man-made island triangular in plan, or rather two islands, formed at the beginning of the 18th century as a result of digging of two canals for the needs of shipbuilders, Rukov and Admiral Teisky. It is believed that Peter I himself gave the name Holland to this place, that is the place near the Admiralty where the warehouses of the ship's timber were arranged, and named so in honor of his beloved country in Europe, from where his ideas about the transformation of Russia came to us. The name New Holland was also given by him when due to the tightness of Holland it was on these new islands that the timber warehouses were transferred. New Holland is obviously a unique monument of industrial architecture of early classicism. Note that in the 18th century, Russian large from St. Petersburg went in large quantities for the English fleet, thanks to which England largely received the title of Lady of the Seas. Both before and after the revolution, these islands were closed and gloomy territory. In Soviet and early Russian times, there were warehouses of the naval base of the Baltic fleet. Only in 2004, when the military left the territory and it was transferred to the city, a large-scale and expensive reconstruction began. The result of this was the creation of a public open area, one of the most comfortable, visited and loved by the townspeople. The island hosts an active concert and educational activity. There is a public park and numerous cafes, exhibitions, master classes, children's and sports events, film festivals and lectures are regularly held here. Out of the historic buildings, we should especially note two famous objects, a monumental arch on the Moika side, which connects the river with the internal basin, originally for delivering timber to the warehouses, and a round building of the sea prison. New Holland is an example for the whole of Russia of the competent use of historic objects, even initially not intended for the public space. On the left side, we bring your attention to the house number 104. The names of a number of famous people are associated with this house. Alexei Musin Pushkin, a famous statesman, historian, collector of Russian antiquities. His famous collection was kept in the house, and the meetings of the Circle of Russian History Lovers were held. Benjamin Tarnovsky, an outstanding physician with a worldwide reputation, the founder of Russian venerology. Grigory Grungjimaila, a Russian traveler, geographer and zoologist, after whom a number of Central Asian objects are named. Viktor Sobolev, an outstanding astrophysicist, founder of the Leningrad School of Theoretical Astrophysics, well known in the scientific world. Behind house 104 is the palace of Grand Duke Alexander Mikhailovich Romanov, grandson of Nicholas I and childhood friend of Nicholas II. Initially, the palace of Princess Varansova Trubitskaya was restored and gifted by Nicholas II on the wedding of Prince Alexander and Princess Xenia, daughter of Emperor Alexander III and sister of Nicholas II. 
Franz Alexander, after graduating from the Naval School and getting the rank of General, was the head of the main directorate of merchant shippings and ports. He participated in the Russian-Japanese and World War I. He made a significant contribution to the development of Russian aviation and died in exile. Most of the living Romanovs known to us are precisely the descendants of Prince Alexander. As for the palace, after the revolution there was created an institute, now a university, of physical culture named after Peter Lesgaf, which has been leading its history since 1896, when the outstanding Russian scientist, biologist, anatomist, anthropologist, doctor, teacher, public figure Peter Lesgaf founded his courses and created a scientific system for physical education. On the final eighth in a row section of the Moika River on the right, there is Nova Admiraltyski Island, formed by the artificial Nova Admiraltyski Canal of early 18th century, the Niva and the Moika. It is entirely occupied by the state enterprise Admiraltyski Virfi. Yes, this is exactly the first industrial enterprise in St. Petersburg and one of the oldest shipbuilding enterprises in Russia, founded in 1704 by Peter the Great as the Admiralty House and launched the first ship in 1706. Admiral from the Arabic Lord of the Sea, as you know, is a military rank of the highest officers of the naval forces. The term Admiralty could be understood as the supreme governing body of the naval forces, including military shipbuilding and the main administrative building of this department, as well as the territory of military shipbuilding with the entire complex of administrative and industrial buildings. Over the course of three centuries, this enterprise has repeatedly changed its name and organizational forms. The contribution of the St. Petersburg shipyard to the history of Russia is invaluable and requires separate consideration. Now it is a large joint stock company for the design, construction and repair of non-nuclear civil and military ships, which is a part of the Russian State Shipbuilding Holding Company, named United Shipbuilding Corporation and is one of its engines. On the left bank, up to the Prashka River, the palace of Grand Duke Alexei Alexandrovich, one of the sons of Emperor Alexander II, deserves our attention. In Soviet times, there were various organizations here, and the building deteriorated. However, in our times, after extensive restoration and reconstruction, the House of Music is located in the house. The main purpose of it is to preserve and develop the traditions of classical academic musical art, prepare young performers for international festivals and competitions. A number of buildings on the shore before and after the palace are occupied by the leading Russian institute in the field of marine geology, the Gramberg All-Russian Research Institute of Geology and Mineral Resources of the World Ocean. The achievements of the institute in the field of geological mapping, studying the mineral resource base of the shelf, monitoring the geological environment, including the Arctic and Antarctic, are truly outstanding and recognized throughout the world, and ultimately they serve the purpose of ensuring the mineral and raw material security of Russia and the solution of federal geopolitical tasks. From the Pryashka River to the last bridge Karabinny, on our way on the Moika River, on the left bank is the territory of the St. Nicholas the Wonderworker Psychiatric Hospital, popularly called Pryashka. This is a large medical institution, one of the oldest in Russia, with a long, almost 150 years old history, which arose from a hospital for the mentally disordered at the prison, which was originally located in this place. A galaxy of outstanding doctors and scientists worked at the hospital. The Moika outfall is at Bolshaya Niva. Before us is the southwestern part of Vasilivsky Island, where the production facilities of one of the flagships of domestic shipbuilding are located, including the nuclear power plant, the second largest shipbuilding enterprise in St. Petersburg, Baltiski Zavod, also a part of the United Shipbuilding Corporation, and for more than 150 years it works for the good of Russia.